All right. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Hope you are doing well on this Sunday. All right. Just making sure everything's pulling up on the computer. Excellent. So this is Paint with Lovejoy. Um, and this is our weekend demo for probably about 30, 40 minutes. And uh, my channel is geared towards first time and beginner painters. So especially for today's painting, if you've never painted before, this is a really good one to start with. And we are going to be doing a sunset uh, with a little bit of water and a pier on here in silhouette with our black. Um, so we're going to lay on a couple of colors, work on some blending, um, and then we'll come in with our composition with the black. Uh, but up until then, we get to be kind of an abstract painter. So we have our colors for today, and I am on an 8x10 canvas panel, so it's on the thin side. Some of you may be painting on a stretched canvas, um, so there's going to be a little bit more width on the side. So those of you on the stretched canvas, I recommend that when our background color comes to the edge, wrap it around the side, the tops, you know, in the bottom and everything. It just looks nice hanging on the wall, having that color wrap around the edge. And if you have any questions today, please feel free to leave a comment in the chat and I'll address it as, um, as I'm talking and painting. And with this painting or any painting I do, you are more than welcome to switch out colors. So if you want more of a pinks and purples sunset compared to uh, the yellows and oranges I'll use, you are more than welcome to switch this out. So what we're gonna do first, and I am on a large flat brush. Um, if you've got a medium flat brush, that one will work just as well. But we're going to lay our horizon line in here and then we're going to kind of be abstract painters and just kind of play with our blending so what you guys at home i want you to actually do a light lemony yellow color for this so pull some of that white aside and add a little bit of yellow so you're going pretty light i'm going to go just a bit darker on mine so that way it shows up a little bit better on the video um, so that way there's nice contrast um, but I want you guys at home to do this with more of the light lemony yellow color. So to lay our horizon line on here, um, we're going to place little dots and then we'll connect the dots for our horizon line. So I like to start kind of on that right hand side, top corner, go down maybe about three or four inches. We're going about a third of the way down. So if you're on a bigger canvas, actually let's go a little further. There we go. If you're on a bigger canvas, um, you can adjust how far down you go um, for applying this line. All right, so now we're gonna take that same spot and you've got two options. You can put your finger up in the top corner and then your thumb where you place that dot and then hold that position and then come to the other side and then where your thumb is, we're gonna place that dot. And if you wanna do that two or three times in the center, you can. And then we're basically gonna connect the dots and create your horizon line. Now, when you do this, if it happens to be a little bit of a wobbly line, totally okay. Um, basically, the fact that you're painting that's the most important thing today. So now I'm going to go back to that light lemony yellow color and I'm using student grade paint. So I'm going to apply this just a little bit thicker so I have a little more opaque coverage. So if you're using student grade paint or paint that's on the thin side, um, I want you to uh, apply yours a little bit thicker as well. And on today's painting, I'm going to keep with kind of horizontal little brush strokes just because I kind of like that effect. Uh, but in some of the other demos, I've talked about brush strokes to where you use kind of the full width of the brush stroke, turn it sideways, create a skinnier line, or make X marks. But today, I'm going to keep with just kind of this nice horizontal brush stroke. So I'm going to kind of create this uh, abstract shape above the horizon line, then we're going to mimic it below, and then we'll be moving on to our next colors. And like I said, just kind of keeping with this nice back and forth uh, motion. I like some of the fine little points that this creates, and then we'll be overlapping some of these other colors as we move into it. But again, full permission to switch things out. And again, if you're inclined to put this color somewhere I do not, trust your instincts and go ahead and do that. So now we're going to go below that horizon line and just kind of closely mimic that shape. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, from our horizon line down, this is going to be our water and our pier is going to go right kind of on that horizon line. So we want to think, we want to imagine that what is happening in the sky is going to be reflecting down in our water here. All right, and let's see, we've got quite a few of you guys jumping on. Hi, Miss Smith and Denise and Jen. 
thanks so much for joining. I was looking to see, I thought somebody else was typing something there for a minute. Um, but hope you guys are having a great weekend and had a nice holiday and stayed safe. All right, so now we're going to grab a little bit more of the yellow. And I'm, again, just still keeping with this nice kind of horizontal brush stroke. And we're going kind of around the perimeter in some of these spots for the yellow. Then we're going to be adding a touch of orange to our yellow and white mixture for kind of a pastel orange color. All right. And let's see, I need to actually make some more of my white and yellow. So just making a little bit more of that. And then again, a little bit of pigment goes a long way. So it is easier to start off kind of light, put it on the edge, and then you start mixing it in and you can get to kind of the shade that you like. I'm gonna go a little brighter. And as we do this, we're gonna overlap a little bit of the white and the yellow that we were doing. And when we overlap this color, um, they're gonna kind of mix together and the color will change. It will shift a little bit. Um, what you're doing is blending your colors. This is called wet on wet blending. Let's see if you got to make your color a second or third time. Don't stress about the exact same shade every time. And if you are holding your breath right now, take a deep inhale, let it out, let any stress and frustration. It's just painting. It's Sunday, um, hopefully you have things to look forward to this week and things to be grateful for, but when you're painting, it's, you know, it's not the end of the world, it's an escape from the world. All right, and as you're applying each color, if you wanna kinda of keep just light pressure, you can go over other areas and soften it and blend. If you even feel like finger painting, get in there and you can kinda of blend the two colors. Um, but when you're blending the two colors, you can only do it while your paint is wet. So if you have super, super fast drying paint, maybe go ahead and do all your blending here and then move into the next color. So as we're doing these 30 minute and 40 minute little demos, don't feel like you have to keep up with the pace of this video. Pause the video, paint on yours for a little bit, watch a little bit more, um, but go at your pace. You do not have to keep it a 30 minute demo. All right, so now I'm adding more orange to that mixture, going darker. And we're going to do the same thing, just kind of haze that color around it. And you may notice that as you make the color here and then you apply it here, you go, you know, it's not quite dark enough. Um, so feel free to adjust the color um, after you've applied it to the canvas if you're inclined to adjust it. I wanted a bit more of contrast, so I wanted more orange in there. And let's give a few little fingers shooting out and again just kind of get lost in the process of moving the paint across the canvas and just having fun your only responsibility is just covering the white space here on the canvas all right so let's see i'm actually going to clean wipe off that excess paint we're going to start adding a little bit of uh, red to this. Actually, I was debating if we should change colors. Hmm. Let's go with a little bit of red and then purple. All right. And like I said earlier, if you are inclined to switch colors, if you want to start putting pinks in here and purples, go right ahead. Switch it up. Um, so by adding some red here, it's darkening that color. There we go. And then again, we're just going to go right around the edge. I am overlapping kind of that orangish color. Uh, creating that new shade and keeping just kind of light pressure. And again, if you even notice like right there when I did that, it was more red than the last time. You can always adjust your color, but um, having some of that variety that happens just adds more interesting effects to your painting. And again, those of you that are on that stretched canvas, when you're on the edge, just carry this color around that side. Um, it just looks extra nice when you hang it on the wall, having that color wrap around the edge. 
and especially for this type of background, it's easier to do it now while you have the color made compared to going back later and trying to match all those um, different shades that are going to be coming off the canvas. So again, just wiping off that excess paint. I'm going for a little more red, and then we're going to put some blue, uh, some purple in there. I like very high contrast stuff, so that's why I end up uh, tending to hang out with these bright, warm colors. And then I like the contrast of the black and then the coolness of the blue when we add that on there. So as you get more and more into painting, start taking note, notice, um, just a mental note for yourself, of what types of paintings you're attracted to, what types of colors make you smile, what types of colors do you enjoy painting. Because uh, a lot of art is just um, finding out more about yourself and more about the things that you like. And that's why art is a very personal experience. All right, we'll be moving into some purple in just a moment. And again, if you're inclined to do anything in here, go right ahead and do that. If you're even adding more and you realize, hey, you want to go back to that yellow and do more before it dries, um, clean your brush really good or grab a new brush, but go back and do anything that you want in here um, before your paint dries. Okay, so let's see. We're actually just going to start putting some purple on top of here. And we may adjust. The purple may be a little darker than I want, so let's see. Uh, it is a little more muddy than I'd like. Let's throw a little bit on here and just see. Hmm. All right, so we're going to switch directions. I'm going to clean that brush really good. And we're actually going to go in with some lighter lavender. So we're going to use some white and purple. And even when you're painting, if you feel like, if you're inclined or your instincts encourage you to kind of change directions in the middle of a painting and you had a bit of a plan, um, trust that. You never know where those uh, instincts might take you and it could end up being something really awesome that might spur a new inspiration and a new direction that you want to go. All right, so let's see. Let's throw some of it up here. Nice. And yeah, this is a bit more of the effect I was looking for. So as it's overlapping this lighter purple with the red, it is changing colors. It's a really nice kind of warm color. Uh, so feel free to kind of play with that. If you want to add a bit more red to this mixture, you can. But it is kind of nice at this point. You know, we know what subject matter we're going to put on this, but right now we're an abstract painter. So really anything goes. So take a look at it from different angles. Maybe turn it upside down. What does it look like? Uh, what do you see? Uh, what does it look like when you hold it in front of the mirror? And again, you're just finding out more of what you like about art and your creative process. All right, so now let's add some more purple going a little bit darker. And oh, uh, definitely a note um, that original yellow line, we, are, we did paint right over it. So if you were left that space for that first original yellow line for the horizon line, just paint right over it. We are going to reapply it with black, um, but I want to make sure that your colors kind of blend nicely. So uh, go right over that line if needed. And no matter what you guys paint today, please email me photos of what you paint. Um, email them paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com or tag me in the social media outlets. Um, you guys are doing awesome. Keep sharing it with your community. Get more and more people to kind of get creative and relax. Uh, our world is not getting any less stressful. So it's truly up to each individual to find your outlets to make your life a happy place as much as possible. All right, so again, anything you want to do to your background, do it now before the paint dries. And I am going to recommend that you fully let this dry before we, you move into putting your pier um, and the silhouette stuff that we'll be doing. Most acrylic paint does dry in about 15 or 20 minutes. Um, and if you have a hair dryer or it's really hot outside and sunny, you can set it outside or use the hair dryer to uh, speed up the process. Right. Leave that in there. And again, if you do want to go back to any of these 
colors. Go for it. And let's see, let's give us a few minutes to dry, see if there's any questions on the chat. Nope, pretty low key, awesome. Makes for a nice Sunday. And just even a note, you don't have to do these videos live. Um, you can always catch the replay and go at your own pace. And like I said earlier, utilize the pause section uh, or the pause button just to go at your own pace. I think sometimes in the beginning stages of painting, when you're trying to keep up with a, the paint night stuff sometimes, or when you're trying to keep up with a 30 minute demo, um, it, you might get a little more frustrated than you should. So kind of, again, go at your own pace, take your time, enjoy the process of painting, because that's really what's more important is just the process of painting and getting lost into the physical act of painting, because each time you paint, you'll get a little bit better, a little bit better, you'll learn something new. Um, you will always learn something from painting. All right, so let's see, let's give that a few seconds to dry. Um, let's see, we got a question. Uh, high contrast, what does it mean when I say high contrast colors? Um, so high contrast is basically high intensity. So your biggest contrast of all is black and white. Um, and when we've done some of the other demos, when we do that catch light in the eye, and it's that pure white next to that pure black of the pupil, um, that high contrast immediately draws your eye to that point. Um, and that's generally the focal point of any painting. So you always have a high contrast area. For this particular painting, we have nice bright, bold yellows, uh, oranges, reds, even the purples in here. And then contrasting that, especially on the lighter colors, when we put the black on top of it, that immediately makes it kind of pop forward. And when you're looking at the color wheel, you're contrasting colors or you're complementing colors. So um, yellow and purple are opposite each other on the color wheel and they're high contrasting colors like black and white. Um, red and green contrasting colors. Uh, blue and orange contrasting colors. And because they're high contrast, a lot of people are drawn to that. So you'll see that in a lot of advertising. You'll see that in some really popular uh, paintings. And even in fashion, you'll see certain color combos that are, um, you know, uh, season signatures. But there's a reason that those colors are popular um, based on how they complement each other, their contrast, and how people perceive that color. All right, so hopefully that explained. That was long-winded, but hopefully that explained it and it allowed some time for my paint to dry. So good question. All right, so let's see. We're actually going to do, let's see, we'll put the pier in first. We're going to do our water lines on here to make below the horizon line. All right, um, actually, so let's do the horizon line with blue. So I am moving down to the pointy brush. We're going to grab our... Um, blue and let's actually make a medium blue so i'm pulling some of that blue aside about a one-to-one -one ratio i just basically didn't want it to be that super dark so going for our medium blue and we're going to do the kind of the same thing that we did at the beginning we're going to re-put our uh, reapply our horizon line so if you can kind of still see where your yellow line was even though i told you to cover it up um, we're basically going to go right over that so kind of starting fresh again Start at that top right hand corner or top left hand corner. We're going to go down, you know, you can kind of eyeball it, but about the same amount that you went last time and place your line. And then if you need to, you can do that thumb on the or forefinger on the corner, thumb on your dot and pull it over to the other side, holding that position. And then if you need to do that a few more times, so that way you can connect the dots. Okay, so you've got your lines across. And then basically, again, this is our horizon line. So connect all those dots, and then we're going to start putting the rest of our details on here. We're still kind of an abstract painter right now, even though we just split the canvas. All right. Okay, so let's see, I want this to dry a little bit more. So let's go ahead and we're gonna do the pier. We're gonna move into black paint and we're gonna go right above the horizon line and the pier is gonna kind of come out to about right here. We're gonna hover above that horizon line going across and then we'll put the legs in 
And uh, I live in San Diego, California, and I've been to the OB Pier quite a bit because I live in Point Loma. Um, and they kind of have a, a house, a little restaurant in the middle of their pier uh, compared to the end of the pier. So we'll be adding that. But full permission to um, switch this up and make it iconic to your favorite pier. Um, if you want to put the Ferris wheel for the Santa Monica pier or um, a couple of the other houses that might be on different piers. I can't remember all of the names. I think Huntington Beach is another popular one. Newport Beach, Santa Monica, yeah. All right, so again, we're gonna uh, hover above our horizon line. So coming out, I like the high contrast hanging out over the lighter area. So starting on that left-hand side, go over probably about five inches and you're gonna hover above that horizon line and then I want you to go up about an inch and place a dot. And then from there, um, if you can kind of hover, make a few other little lines to be able to connect the dots, makes it a little bit easier. Or if you want to just go straight in, put your uh, brush right there and then just pull it all the way across. Whatever you feel comfortable with doing today, go for it. Play with your pressure. Um, if you need to, put that pinky out to kind of steady your hand or rest your forearm against the edge of the table. Uh, so that way you can kind of keep consistent pressure. And if it happens to, maybe it starts off skinny and then it gets a little bit wider, just go with the widest point and that's what your pier looks like for today. So try not to stress about it. All right, so let's see, let's put that little house on here. So like I said, the one that I'm referencing is the OB pier. That's about halfway down the pier. So we're gonna make a little box, fill in that box and then a triangle for the top for the roof going back to kindergarten nothing's wrong with that all right and then from here we're going to just be making vertical or uh, yeah vertical lines and i am going to pull these just a little bit below the horizon line there we go because you got to again remember that the pier is going out into the water Remember to breathe. And if you're finding that your brush is shaky as you go to apply your paint, that means you're holding your breath. So exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas. And sometimes piers um, aren't just one straight shot out. Sometimes they have a T at the end. And where they'd have the T, um, the pillars going into the ocean would overlap. So if you're doing a pier that mimics that, you can have these lines overlap each other. All right, and if, let's see, let's put a few little light posts out here on the top of the pier. We'll come back in and put some lights on them in a moment. These are a little bit more wider spaced. Oops, a little bit taller. All right, and even just by adding this black compared to the back, this gives us that nice contrast that we were just talking about. So when you go back and look at your uh, progress pictures, notice how it looks different from one picture to the next based on the element, based on how much black you added, how much of your highlight, how much white. Um, and again, just start noticing how things look different. All right, so before we add, uh, we're gonna put a little bit of a ground element on here. I wanna put the water lines in. And I am gonna go back up to the large um, flat brush. If you don't have a large flat brush like this, you can do the same thing with this brush, or you can even do the same thing with the pointy brush. So don't let your tools um, what you have for tools stop you. All right, so as we do this, I am actually just gonna use the end of the brush. We're gonna be using the medium blue, the dark blue, and even a little bit of white. And you're imagining that these are gonna be the ripple lines of the water. And for here, I'm actually imagining that I'm um, kind of up on the cliff side. So we're looking down and we'll have a silhouette of the cliff on the edge, but we're looking down. So I'm not seeing too much of the crashing waves 
um, from the perspective that I'm using. But if you want to put waves in yours, you can. So I'm going back and I'm making that medium blue. And if yours is a little bit darker or lighter than mine, totally okay. And like I said, we're going to keep the brush pretty perpendicular to here. And we're going to make these kind of overlapping uh, lines. And you're again imagining that these are the ripples in the water. And just kind of light pressure, just using the end of this. And you can keep them kind of horizontal, or if you want a little bit of a curve to them, um, totally okay. And when you need to make your blue again, if it's a little darker or lighter, totally okay. And this is something that looks really cool. It may look kind of weird up close as you're painting it, but as you step away and look at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away, um, your eye looks at it differently from that distance. And this is the normal viewing distance for most things in life and especially artwork. Um, and things tend to look better from a distance. So start getting out of your chair and looking um, at your painting from that distance and assess how it looks different, what it needs, what it might, uh, uh, not, might not need. Are you done? Um, again, you're conversing with your painting. And as we're doing these blue lines, totally okay if they overlap each other. Basically, the kind of the, the idea is allowing some of the color from underneath, again, mimicking the reflection from the sky. And I would recommend letting your black paint dry before you bring some of the water that's going to be crashing underneath. Mine's still wet, so it picked up a little bit of that. Uh, you can kind of play with that or, like I said, just let it dry. If you end up picking up some of that black, just wipe off um, that pigment from your brush and pick up the blue again. All right, and then now I'm actually going to do this with just that direct blue going a little bit darker. And feel free to get kind of expressive with this. Have fun. Maybe you're applying the paint a little bit thicker with this. Um, Maybe you're using a different tool to apply it. Again, you're just escaping from the world, relaxing and turning, becoming a magician, turning a blank surface into a scene, into a 3D object. So again, as we're doing this, make sure you come right up next to that horizon line so that way it doesn't look like it's floating out there all by itself. And I'm just kind of using that light pressure to move some of that underneath the pier. We're going to let this dry a little bit. We're going to put some of our, um, our cliff side in here, and then I've got a palm tree that's going to come out on this side. Uh, and then we'll come back and put some white highlights. All right, we're just now at about 30 minutes, so not bad. These are good little escapes, and I will continue to do this on the weekends, Saturday and Sunday, we'll do the live version. And on Fridays, uh, we did a premiere of an edited video and that, you know, went really well. And it was nice that I could answer questions and focus um, and talk with you guys a little bit more. Um, so it worked out really well. Nice. Just looking to see what I need to change. All right. So let's clean that brush. We're going to go into black paint and put our edges of our cliffs. And because some of the white blue paint's still gonna be wet, it will mix with the black, but the black's a bit more of a powerful color, so it'll we'll just apply it a little bit thicker and it'll eat up that edge. So again, like I said, I'm imagining that this is a cliff, so taking that big chunk of white, putting this on the edge, and we're gonna do the same thing here. And we're going to imagine that a palm tree is coming from this side. All right. And if you need to, you can move down to that small pointy brush or a medium flat brush if you need. So for our palm tree, and let me actually grab some more black. And 
let's go ahead and just move down to this one, make it a little bit easier. All right, so our, for our palm tree, just take this in simple steps. Don't overthink it too much. I like to kind of put my brush where I want the palm tree to end, and then we're gonna just kind of pull it down to the ground. So I'm gonna put it right here, pull it straight down. Don't think too much. If you need to go back and kind of fill in the space, go right ahead. And then for our palm fronds, first two, kind of hug towards the tree, towards the tree trunk. And again, I'm holding that brush kind of sideways. And if that's too much, feel free to use that small pointy brush. And then putting our other palm fronds in here. All right, and before we move down to do the leaves on there, I'm gonna do just some of the, I guess, kind of uh, cliff beach grass. Again, just kind of using that light pressure going right over the edge. Maybe you have some longer beach grass. If you want to put another palm tree in there, you can. If you want to put another little one down here, you can put as many or as few elements in here as you like. If you want to put birds, flying in the sky, an airplane up there. And again, take note, are you holding your breath? I just had to see if I was holding my breath. <laughs> Um, and again, those of you on the stretched canvas, continue those little blades of grass um, around the edge. All right. And kind of doing these blades of grass is good practice um, for the uh, leaves on our palm tree. So again, either using this brush or move down to the pointy brush. Thinking that each little dash mark is a leaf on the palm frond. You want these to overlap each other. You want a very healthy palm tree. And it looks kind of funny with just one. So make sure you do all of them um, before you judge your palm tree. And again, if you need to use that small pointy brush. And remember every two or three brush strokes, grab more paint. You're gonna kind of get into a groove of applying your paint, um, but you wanna make sure that it's gonna be thick enough and then it covers. Sorry, I get kind of zoned out. Forget that I'm supposed to talk sometimes and that this is live. <laughs> All right. So we are gonna put some highlights on here, break up that space. Um, if you wanna put little coconuts in your palm tree, go right ahead. Um, if you even wanna have a bird flying in the sky. Whoops, let me actually grab the pointy brush for that. So let's dump that in there. We're gonna grab some white. We do have our little lamps out here. So giving them, oops, get all that black paint out. All right, now grabbing the white. And if you wanted to, you could do the yellow and white mixture um, or you can do the white. All right, and then on the palm tree, uh, I would recommend letting this dry. 
and then doing this, but given the sake that I am just on the demo, I'm going to go right in. And that's just because you don't want to contaminate the white with the black. So just doing a few of these little dots or uh, little dashes for highlights on our palm tree. I'm going to do the same thing on the grass. And that's pretty much the last step. Oh, and a few little white highlights on our water. And if you end up doing some of these white highlights and you realize you're like, oh, maybe a little too much in one area, just go back with the black and go over it. And even here, if you wanted to use greens and yellows instead of black, go right ahead. Put a few little highlights on the tree trunk. And then clean that brush off. And if you want, you can either do it with the pointy brush or go back to that medium flat brush and just get a few little, maybe even your the little white caps. And again, that high contrast that we were talking about before, even having this kind of pure white next to some of that uh, dark blue gives you another contrast value. So you'll find it many, many places. And then maybe there's even a few underneath the edges where the water would be going over the base of the pier. And again, if you wanted to go back and add any more colors and adjustments, make this your own. Use this just as a guideline, um, but full permission to deviate and get creative. With this being a channel for first time and beginner painters, again, just use this as a base, but let your creativity kind of shine. Like even right here as I'm looking on the screen, a little more white areas than I would like. So again, trust your instincts as you are looking at your canvas and things you might want to adjust, things you want to try in the future, and just keep pushing your own skills. And with that being said, continue to let me know what you want me to paint for the demos. Um, I'll get them out there on the list. And for some reason, should we all go into lockdown again, um, I will likely start doing the daily demos again. Uh, since my job would probably be affected. All right, so I hope you guys had fun and please keep painting, finding your creative outlets to just relax and have fun. And I will see everybody next week. Um, so yeah, take care, thanks, and have a good one.